morning everyone hope you have a great weekend so we can start with today's stand up So we might finish and keep switching off. And we let's just start to, to the presentation. So everyone's ready, right? Like always, we have many presentation. Who is the group that's ready? Or maybe group one, they start to go in order. Group four members, please, if you can speak up. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, guys. So, uh, are you guys ready for you? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, you can go ahead and share. So, today I'm going to present our uh, journey on building a news classification for Amhari dataset. So the methodology we use was we started by collecting data. We actually got a sourced a uh, label dataset on Amhari news classification from Kaggle. And we before training the model, we know, uh, we did some pre-processing like normalizing character mas uh, mismatch and removed non-word character and removed uh, an English word this. So after doing that, our plan was to train multiple models and check which one is the best. Uh, some of the model was built, built small Amari, cut and uh, MT5 small. But uh, due to lack of resource, like we, for example, when we train MT5 small, we always had problem on the training part. So we just took this model and uh, to check our model performance, we took a uh, classification models matrix like accuracy, precision, recall, and the point scope. So this was our data. We have 61,000 rows of news data. Uh, from this uh, graph, you can see that our data is in balance. Most of uh, belongs to local news and politics. And after developing our model, we first uploaded our model to Hugging Face. So anyone can use it maybe to uh, fine tune it even more. And we develop an React app for news classification where a user can copy a news article and paste it and the model will tell it in which category the news belongs to. So this is the result of our model. Before fine tuning, we can see that it's struggled to with the classification. It, it, it can't understand most of the data, but after uh, fine tuning, we can see a significant improvement. This is just after only doing, uh, after fine tuning only for five epochs. If we add, or if you train the model even more, we can get maybe an accuracy of 90. So this is what our, React app looks like, where a user will uh, paste a new data here and you will tell it in which category it will belongs to. So for limitations, the number I think, one. Uh, I can complete from here, Johannes. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can keep uh, sharing your screen. Okay. Uh, here is the uh, limitation and uh, future improvement. Uh, one of the limitation was uh, GPU since uh, we can't all uh, as a team fine tuning all our models at the same time so we need to uh, distribute uh, who will uh, fine tune now and who will fine tune later so this is one of the limitation also uh, the time uh, it's just uh, a week 
and uh, the server is not working all the time for some uh, issues. Uh, and uh, another reason is the data. Uh, the data is not, uh, there is a, not enough data outside. So uh, what's the uh, future improvement is uh, trying to uh, use uh, powerful GPUs, uh, also extending uh, the training and hypermeter, uh, sorry, uh, hypermeter tuning. Uh, you can go to the next slide. At conclusion, uh, we trained uh, Amharic test classification. So uh, it's better now, uh, enhance its uh, capability. Uh, also, uh, we our future is uh, to overcome resources limitation uh, for better performance. Okay, thank you for the presentation. Uh, is it done? Yeah. Okay, so is there a demo maybe you can show us uh, or? Okay, is so for now I can show. So if Johannes can show them. Uh, when you say demo like uh, the reactor yeah. or? Yeah, there I have a question. I mean, is the React app actually answering through the model, the one that you trained, or? Yes, yes. Uh, I can't sh show you the demo, but I can show you the script. So, uh, Okay, sorry, I forgot where I have here it is. So, as I said, we loaded first. Uh, uh, can you see my screen? Okay. No, you haven't shared it. So, the way we did was first, after finding the model, we uploaded to uh, Hugging Face. Then, th this is where in the hugging phase is located and we will just get that model and the tokenizer of that and we will just return a prediction here we will return like this with amharic uh, with amharic letters and in the front end you will just call this function okay so first how, how many tokens do you find uh, how big was your data set our data set is around six, uh, we have 61,000 rows. And how accurate does uh, the model camera? You're using Llama, right? No Llama, we use the Bert Small. Uh, is, uh, where is this? Bert Small and the accuracy is like this. We only trained it for five epochs, but this is how the I model performs. A really high accuracy. I just uh, want to be sure if you actually ask it in Amharic, it answers pretty well, understanding your question. Uh, let me show you the next one. So we actually give it a data and try to see how it performs. So this is this is after uh, finding in the model and this is the true category and the predicted category it still missed some of them but we can see it's a much okay. improvement um, predict is it predict them with the annotation i mean label it's saying this particular data is news business is that how the model is working yes, right yeah, now yes yeah okay that's that's a good thing uh, what about have you tried having a letter of a literal conversation with it like we are doing in english in chat gpt have you tried no. to no 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 we can't understand I, it cannot give maybe in the react app you will just give you a response but not uh, like a conversation type wow 
well. And thank you for the presentation. Uh, could you tell me your group dynamics? How was it? Is everyone contributed? What was each person task? Yes, yes, everyone was contributing. Yeah, we will have a meeting almost every day. I think for last week we only missed one day, but we will have a meeting. We will have conversation on our group channel Slack. We will have conversation on private. Yeah, the dynamics was good. Mm -hmm. uh, Imtinan, if you have question. Yeah. Okay. Up? Yes. Thank you. Uh, um. So I have this one question. So you said you, you used like a data set of 61,000 rows or 1,000 records, right? Yes. So, yes. and you already have seen um, like um, a significant improvement in how the model was performing, right? Yes. So uh, how do you, like, uh, what is your sense of like um, the availability of the data? Out? Like you already, like I have seen that you, um you prepare this uh, front end uh, like um for for like a data annotation basically right or is it for interacting with the with the with the model uh it's interacting with the model like if a okay. user yeah if a user can copy an article from some website and they can paste it there and they will return with the category that article belongs to Okay, so just by like, what is your like um, now, like uh, after doing this project, what is your sense or prediction of like, if you want to collect as much data as you can, how how much data is available? Do you think there is available, there is enough data to actually um, train this model to um, to really a satisfactory level, or or like maybe even other models? Okay, I think it show. Wants to answer? Okay, that's you can you can go ahead. Okay, uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay. Uh, for the question you have raised, uh, uh, we were not able to have uh, label data in on our hand. That's why we are, have been used the data that we put on the uh, Kagan. If uh, we got chance to have uh, a data. Or if we if we got a chance to label data around uh, us, uh, maybe the model can be uh, a little bit better from the one that's uh, giving an answer for uh, today. Uh, maybe it, it's uh, time intensive or uh, source. Uh, it will take us time to label data, or it will uh, need us resources to make it better understanding the, the language. Uh, that's uh, my reflection on the equation. OK. okay. And uh, to add, yes, to yeah. add to that, to that I, I don't think the, there is a much uh, like lack of news uh, data when it comes to Amari. But the problem is most of these news data are not labeled. But yeah. for example, yeah, from Telegram, we can get a lot of data relating to news. Okay. 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 Thank you. One thing. So, based on the specific area that you trained your model, I mean, if I ask it now a question that has a new Amharic data that the model doesn't know, it actually categorizes the right way. Have you tested it? Yes. As, uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, this is the uh, accuracy of our model. This is just with the new data. This is not the uh, training data. This accuracy is up with the uh, validation data set. Okay, so maybe last question: What made you decide to do the the fine tuning with this category? I mean, that wasn't what I expected. I, I just want to know what what was the plan of deciding to do that annotation for fine tuning? Okay, you, are you talking about the model selection or the uh, no? Just... Your fine tuning purpose. Is now from what I'm seeing is creating data annotation for data for Amharic text, right? That's, that's what's doing uh, the result. So uh, we, we didn't decide this at the beginning of uh, the week. Uh, actually, we are trying to build uh, a data like uh, the chatbot. Uh, the first our first aim was to build like a low adversary 
chatbot where you can tell it some load data and uh, get an information or an advice. Uh, but uh, we, uh, the data we got, we had some PDF files, but when we scraped the data, it wasn't uh, scraping it right. There was some English words. So since we didn't have a lot of time, we just uh, ended up with doing this. Our uh, first uh, plan was not to do news classification. Okay, thank you, Johannes. Thank you, Group One, for the presentation. Uh, good work. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's move on to Group Two. Any members from Group Two? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, Abraham. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, let me say thumb up if you see my screen. Yes, we can see it. Okay, uh, 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 this is my report, and uh, I'm Abraham. Um, today I'm going to be sharing you about our progress in the LLM fine tuning. So, uh, yeah, the objective was actually to choose uh, uh, an LLM model and fine tune it specifically uh, based on the data that we have collected uh, from uh, our previous week's challenge. And the, the business need is uh, to actually uh, to give a solution to, to, to fine tune uh, the low resource languages such as Amharic, Swahili, and other. And uh, to it, the, the customers is to improve the customer support using the generic text in Amharic, which was Amharic as our own language. We have considered several uh, open LLM, uh, LLM models, open source LLM models. But uh, there are a bunch of uh, LLM models available, such as Metaral 87B or the fine tune version of Lama 2. And uh, uh, we'll, uh, so as a task overview, we'll, we'll fine tune the data with, with, uh, our, with our text. Um, uh, yeah, so when we go to the technical implementation, uh, we have loaded the LLM images for inference. As an initial, we used uh, Metas LLM metric, 7BHF model. Uh, we have set it up in Agnipet account, which will load the form, and we have actually tried uh, the real Lama to model that is not fine print, which is the open source version. And we have also did have model uh, quantization. Uh, uh, we have made the Lama to model to use the GPU. We have used bits and bytes library to achieve that. We have enabled it to use the uh, eight bit uh, parameter to actually quantize the, uh, the data to uh, significantly reduce the memory usage and it allows the model to, use, to, to run efficiently on our GPU. Uh, here is the code snippet of uh, how we have actually implemented the uh, uh, quantization. For inference testing, we have tested three inference testing. This is based on the LAMA2, which is not pre-trained, uh, it's only pre-trained, that's not fine-tuned to understand Amharic. Uh, the, the, the first scenario is to a text generation, Salam uh, which is an Amharic thing like, how are you doing, or uh, which is, we have tested it, and the result is pretty uh, incorrect, as you can see, responding some unknown characters, doesn't understand much. And we have also tried question answering. Uh, we asked them, it's okay, it's uh, responding as an emoji, emojis, and it actually uh, gave us some uh, brief uh, answer about uh, where it's okay as located. And summarization, uh, this didn't give us any result. So we have just got it. And uh, for, uh, moving to the financing part for uh, data processing and preparation, we have uh, defined a class that would remove the normalize the characters and the labeling mismatch. With the normalized uh, labelized text will remove functions and special characters. 
with also removes any emojis in the unnecessary character. We have used, we have also uh, copied from our list, uh, last week uh, project to actually prepare and uh, normalize. And uh, when stepping to fine tune the LLM, and about the data, we have used the data that Hillary shared on the group, which, uh, which is about 69,900 searching rows, more labeled more uh, it's a labeled or it's annotated it's, uh, a data sets of the news. And uh, uh, so when we, when we try to fine tune the data, we have taken some steps. The first one is to talk, tokenize the data. We have uh, implemented Google, Google and then speech to create a custom token. Uh, and since Amharic is, uh, I don't know how to explain this, but requires a lot of tokens and using uh, uh, customized token is a good thing. As you can see, we have trained the tokenization, which is creating the Amharic root model in the Amharic root vocab file. And, uh, and this way, uh, yeah. And uh, when we try to tokenize, when we try to estimate how much token does we have, uh, the data is about 61,915 rows. On average, every row contains about 913 rows, which is uh, 9,168 uh, tokens. We have used uh, GPT's token estimator to actually predict how much token that we have. So approximately, we have uh, 134 million, 231,720 tokens on the data take. So, uh, I don't know why this. Uh, uh. So when we actually tokenize the text, the first one is pre-training the sentence to create a custom, a custom tokenizer. Then we actually tokenize the data. Just creating uh, this is a method, and this is uh, the actual tokenized data on our data set. And uh, we, as a model selection, we use Llama two seven billion chart, which is which is also fine tuned by Gary Logistics model uh, as a fine tuning model. Yes, and as a fine, uh, yeah, we have also uh, tried running the Gary model and see uh, it before actually fine tuning it and uh, observe the, the capabilities of the the Lama to model and to uh, further uh, to actually use it for inference that how, to understand how much we have improved it. We have asked a similar uh, question where is Ethiopia and it's giving us uh, almost a similar answer. And uh, about a fine tuning uh, and for the fine tuning in Amharic, this is the code snippet, the training argument. And, uh, we weren't actually able to do the fine tuning due to our poor planning and our uh, coordination. And the machine was also uh, constantly kept crashing and we ran out of space since all of our teammates, uh, since most of the, since my teammates were also working on the project. And when we actually tried to uh, do the fine tuning, it's giving us uh, this error and uh, as a result of paint we have initially we have con we were able to do an initial inference testing we were able to conduct and uh, we were able to quantize uh, we were able to do a model quantization we have prepared and processed the data we have tried to uh, fine tune the LLA we have did the tokenization And I shouldn't take most of the time. If you guys have some questions, please. Okay, thank you for the presentation, Abraham. So, what is the final thing after you fine tuned it and you tested it? Is it successful? The final result? Uh, no, it is not successful. What kind of answer does it give? Uh, we are not able to actually fine tune the data using okay. our data. The reason is uh, a database instance, uh, the group things that you just mentioned. Yes. That was, uh, thank you for sharing your challenge. So maybe uh, how many models have you tried? 
uh, we have tried uh, the Lama to in Berta, but we okay. didn't give much time for Berta, but we only tried to fine tune the LLM. Yeah. Anything, Lama, Lama. Okay, anything you noticed maybe uh, between the two? <laughs> between the two models, is there something that you said as a comparison? Maybe. Uh, yes, I think the Berta one is more lightweight. Mm. And we can actually observe the fine tune since it doesn't understand much of Amharic. Okay. But the Lama is more flexible. It's actually trained. The Lama to Gari Mori. Uh, when I say Lama, I mean the Gari Mori. Okay. It gives us more uh, Amharic content, such as the inference states that we conducted uh, allowed us to observe the result. Uh, how about that organization? Have you used one sentence piece only or? For tokenization. Uh, yeah. uh, for tokenization, we have used uh, we have used two tokenizers. Actually, we have used the from transformers library. We have actually tried to implement the we have tokenized the data, but uh, I think that we found Google and this more fit for our asset tokenization. Okay. If, if I have answered your question right. It's, yeah, I just want to see your trial and yours. Uh, in, okay. Thank you, Abraham, for presenting what you have, including your challenge. Uh, maybe last question. Uh, could you just tell me about the group dynamics? How was it? Does everyone contributed? I'm asking you at an, at, as, as a team leader. I think I think my teammates are here. It's very fast them. Uh, it's better you're saying it's better or uh, i think let's ask them together <laughs> i'm saying let's make it oh, okay on, on my side we're uh, performing poor we, we, we lack we lack a good communication and there is no proper task delegation you know but yeah if they are here it's better. everyone can teach yeah. it's just I'm asking this question because it matters your grade also. Your team leader saying you are participating uh, is how we also give marks equally or not. So uh, especially team leaders, if you can teach in for your team members, uh, it would be great for us. Uh, thank you, Abraham. But other members, if you can, for group two, unmute and say something about the group dynamics, uh, it would help us a lot. Uh, maybe you can answer the question of uh, um, if you have, if you could do one thing differently, if you could do redo this project again, redo last week again, uh, and do one thing differently, what would you have done? Um, something that yeah. didn't work for me last time. Someone else, if, maybe Abraham, let's just, uh, other members are there from group two? If you can answer this question. Okay. No okay. Okay. Uh, hi. Uh, so, like, uh, from my side, I think uh, Abraham did do more than I did. Uh, he has a, a lot more experience. Uh, I, I did struggle with the concepts a little bit uh, to answer Emptinan's question. I think I would have uh, tried to know the concepts a little bit more deeper before uh, jumping right into the project that's something i would do differently okay what about abraham if there is one thing you could have done differently um uh, what would it be okay i i think i could have done i could have done two things two things differently the first one is uh, looking for alternative models earlier in the Earlier in the week, I have tried considering other uh, fine tuned or written Amharic understanding LLM such as Berta, and uh, there are other uh, available options too. And the second one I would change is I would uh, focus more on fine tuning than uh, pre training. I have uh, I have taken I have spent some time working uh, trying to pre train the data, and I will ask it on uh, Thursday. And that's when I started, um, when I've changed my direction to time training instead of pre training. Uh, is that clear? Okay. 
yeah so just to yeah so you you said you trained your own tokenizer was that because you were trying to do pre-training yes yeah. Okay, so because like if you were fine tuning Gary, you could have just used the tokenizer that Gary had uh, already trained. So uh, wasn't that your plan or like uh, for fine tuning? I mean, uh, yes, uh, I'm planning. I was planning to use uh, uh, th this is like a pool planning issue. Yeah, I have tried to do both and which uh, led me to much confusion. And uh, I, I, I could have actually used there. The, the, yeah, the the tokenizer. Tokenizer. Yes. yes, because if you want to just fine tune Gary's and it already has some understanding of Amharic or like, uh, let's say good and uh, compare relatively good understanding, yeah, should, you should like just use the tokenizer of Gary's. Uh, it's of course understandable that you face these problems because maybe you, could, you like as Hanok said maybe like the concepts were not very clear for you in the beginning but okay so like um, I'm just trying to say like uh, um, it's fine as long as you have learned something and you're more prepared for maybe in the future you can improve this project better in in, um, in a better way uh, is there anyone from group two that want to add something to this? Otherwise, I think uh, Rahmat, we can move with the next uh, group, right? Uh, yes. Okay, groups. Thank you, group two. Group three, the floor is yours. Okay, it will be us. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, so can you see my screen? Okay, it's very good. Yes, you can see. Okay, so I will just touch up on the introduction since everyone uh, knows what we have been doing, and this already touched up on. So, so our aim is to improve text generation from. Uh, Underrepresented language and specifically Amharic language in our case. So, uh, so to, to make understanding of our pro a project is, as I said earlier, enhanced language model to better understand the generated Amharic text and create a customer engagement. So, our challenges have been uh, limited data, small data, uh, also like in terms of. Uh, training the model uh, since it would be in billions and trillions so ours is much lower as compared to the actual model so we had we had also team dynamic challenge productivity and availability that significantly reduced our uh, our output so uh, the importance of multilingual support would be global reach inclusivity in tech in customer experience, specifically on our case. So uh, why do we want to find the model? Uh, we need it for specific tasks, tasks uh, such as Amharic language generation and understanding. So our uh, current project works on that uh, for resource efficiency and improved performance on our language choice. And I say Amharic. So <clears throat> the way we go about it was data collection and preparation the source should be books articles and social media content but the last two are our main source of uh, data so the steps we took are cleaning and pre-processing those data so on data preparation we as i said earlier we collected clean pre-process and also next would be splitting the data so on our data cleaning process we clean for Different. Oh, sorry. Okay, can. Okay, can make the slides. Okay, can see the screen, right? Okay, so the next would be on uh, cleaning the data. So we removed emojis, hashtags, mentions because th there are data from Telegram. Also symbols, hyperlinks, and also normalizing the data. 
uh, there is uh, there was a function called uh, since Amharic had the same letters for different things we had to normalize that uh, to include only one for easier understanding of the Moria English characters and punctuation in new lines also so <laughs> on tokenization step we we made the tokenization to convert text to numerical data for the model to understand. So we used the hacking phase uh, transformer library for different to try different tokenizations. We also made our own, uh, tried our own actually. Uh, in the very model tokenization also works. Uh, why tokenize is to standardize. Also, as I said earlier, model compatibility and for efficient understanding of the model. So we had to split the data into training and validation. We we had two rows for our data. There are text and summaries. So our model would likely be uh, good at summarizing Amharic texts. So so we uh, we also tried to handle large data sets. As you can see here, chunk size is, was used 10, 1,000. Uh, it the problem was. Uh, even though we had a WS instance of 30 GBs, uh, and our rows were significantly huge, I think around 100,000 rows, and uh, the data set would be around uh, 700 megabytes. So <clears throat> it quickly uh, used up all the memory and it crashed. So we had to get a new way of uh, tokenizing those data sets. So it took a huge amount of our time solving this. So one of the things we did was splitting the data into chunks, as I said earlier, into 1,000 chunks. So we chunked the data, and uh, that actually successfully used the memory. That was around 20 GB only. So we actually did the, uh, the, the, the handling of the tokenization we so one of the challenges were not uh, one of the errors made were not saving the tokens before so now that we saved it we can use it anywhere so the creating the data sets so from we use the data sets uh, uh, the data set class from the data sets uh, library uh, so to for efficient handling of the data on the module. So we created the module process each the data set chunks. As I said earlier, we had to process each token, uh, chunks to tokenize. So we saved the tokenize. This allows the data set to, uh, to without, to not do the process again. So it's easy. So now that we have that we tokenized, we build the module. We, the steps we took were define the model, find the model, uh, then we will try to evaluate, then predict any text, uh, zero shots, one shot, and three shots. So, n shots. So, uh, volume training process would be model selection. We selected the, initially we agreed on um, Gary model. So, we tried different kind of models. So, I think Samuel Telebot was a good one initially. So we'll talk about that a little bit in a moment. So training the model in evaluation. So we actually initially uh, used uh, Telebot Amharic model because for the tokenization steps, it seemed better. So we started with this. So on the fine tuning part, uh, we had to uh, load uh, our, data, our data for the data loader for our data set. So like padding and everything are already on the tokenization part. So we fine tuned, we tried starting fine tuning the process. So uh, like the epoch, how many samples it should process at once, the batch size and the settings to control the learning process as well as logs and results. So uh, I, in our perspective, we used eight uh, one time, but it seemed, a lot slower uh, for the eight parts. So when we made it four, it seemed a lot faster. I think it's good, I guess. So the fine tuning process on the training, as I said earlier, for from what we said, the training and validation phases, the training and validation phases are 
have like 90, 10, 90 to 10% uh, on the data. So we started fine tuning. So this is the training part. So the problem here was uh, the machine didn't actually uh, finish it. So this was the most we've got. We're still running the uh, training process. So that's currently where we are right now. So uh, we haven't actually uh, started doing the evaluation process. So we plan to use uh, 1DB and others to actually uh, do that. But as of time constraint and team dynamics was a little bit harder to achieve that. So that was the problem. Also uh, on K limitations, I would like to show you another tab. So on K limitation, limited data source are the the problems. So like having a robust amount of data would help and quality of data also as in the limitations for model performance uh, for the generalization limited data might result in lower accuracy and effectiveness. So which means also overfitting. So a small data set is not ideal for the model. So it might get the model to hallucinate. So Technical constraint would be computational resources. So I think model requires significant uh, resource powers. Uh, I don't know why our training or fine tuning is taking much longer. So I think I have to optimize, even though we used LoRa, we tried LoRa PEFT, uh, which were quantized uh, language specific. So Amharic is uh, really hard to in the in the language space it's very hard so since as i said earlier there are different parts so these are the language specifics so on the feasibility of training the model uh, i think it's possible it's just i want to do more research on this and do the modeling part uh, so that we can definitely conclude on that but from uh, from our research there are uh, researches that had uh, around 3.8 billion uh, tokens. So that's from uh, from 2014 to 16, I guess. So uh, based on that, uh, if we have the data, we might have the data, We just prediction, we might have the data. So I think it is feasible to actually train the model on Amharic and get uh, sub-bar results, like you know, above average results. So. We need more efforts on this, uh, so we need to make more realistic expectations on what the models are, how the models are. So, so we need more community collaborations and more technological advance on Amharic. Uh, so it's really challenging. So I think having more data would help in our case. So this is all uh, that, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Yeah. So just to clarify, there are things that you mentioned, but I like maybe missed them. So which model have you ended up trying to fine tune? Uh, we ended up using the Gary model. So okay. I, I, we have found so, like a reference that say a specific commit of the Gary model works. So we use that. It's, uh, I think that really worked for us. Okay, uh, so it's Gary's. Uh, another mm. thing is that um, uh, finally, with your comment about the vis visibility, you mentioned something about like you said you found research, but uh, what is it about? Is it the da data that is available, or what is it? Uh, it's not actually the data, but the token. Like they were, uh, I'm not able to actually verify it, but the research made. I think it's the it was funded by Norwegian University. So they said from the research they had like uh, three billion tokens, around three billion tokens. So I think that's somehow a good start for Amharic language. So yeah, so they uh, sorry. So just to so I want to understand this. So they said the research says that it's three, uh, using three billion tokens, they managed to what uh, fine tune model for for Nor is it for Norwegian language? Or what is it? No, it's for Amharic. That for was Amharic. Funded, yeah, funded by Amharic. But uh, 
So you, you're saying that three billion tokens should be enough to get a good result? Uh, no. Uh, what? Now what I'm saying is it was from 2014 to 2016. So in mm -hmm. in two years of scraping the data, they found three billion AMR data, and it oh, was like okay. eleven or yeah, more than t no, uh, more than eight years, right? So if we combine it with the data we have until now, it, we would have uh, average more than average uh, data. Okay, That's so what I'm uh, okay, so yeah, yeah, you're saying that uh, this is like your your sense of how much data out there is built is based on this research. Okay, great, yeah. great. So you have actually an actual proof, not not just um, not just a sense. That's very good. It's prediction. Uh, I, I, we need more resource to verify that. That's also, why. yeah. Also, 2016 is uh, like um, how many years is this? Uh, eight. Um, yeah. like probably there are much more data now um available so it's just like um yeah okay so so good so you haven't finished the fine tuning actually uh, yes it's actually still running okay. i was planning to have different models trying but uh, one of the models actually kept crashing as i said we started with somewhere uh, when we try to output uh, output any prompts to just uh, evaluation from the start it was we had a hard time from the organization because like we really had a hard time on that i see um okay so a final question then i will i will uh, hand over to rahman uh so what what did you find too for what was the objective like uh, our objective was for summarization Okay. Uh, since the much of our data had the text and the summarization, so we started from there. So okay. since the, we what we collected our data was on the classification, but the, those data were really small. So is that this data that you just found already available online, summarization for summarizing an Amharic? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, and so this size that you mentioned, seven hundred megabytes or a hundred thousand rows, these are summarization data. Yes, the, we actually uh, combine them with some of our uh, news data. So, uh, or, as I said earlier, they have a small classification compared to what we have. So, having training the model on classification would not be ideal. That's why we just use some of this. Okay. Uh, so up to you. Over to you, Rahman. If you have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so maybe my question is on the exploration that you have done on tokenization. You mentioned few uh, models that you have used. What have you noticed when you explore them in comparison? Uh, specifically, Amharic language has only its own syntax. So, how affected the Amharic language have been with those models? Uh, okay, so we uh, we tried our own tokenization, which performed poorly. Uh, it was rather uh, bad one, but uh, we we used. What was on your the tokenization that you guys created? What does it include what were your the model looking for in the text so uh, the what we were looking was for example in amharic uh, there are uh, like for example in english if we made things uh, for example like person in the, or, or chair or chairs so we need to disassemble the chair and the chairs and maybe uh, so in Amharic, for example, has been his uh, have uh, pro, uh, plural and single verb. So uh, yeah. the, the first thing we saw was those were not accounted for for much of the tokenization. So uh, the Samuel and the, the Gary actually implemented it well on that. So we actually didn't benchmark on that. So what we just saw from time to time is was just that was just better. So we chose that. 
So are they in the Gary organization with the beta? Uh, yes, we just tried somewhere else in Gary. I think Gary was better, I guess. So there are small words we saw. Maybe we don't, we don't have like much larger picture on that. But is there some limitation that you have seen from the Gary tokenization in relation to the Amharic language? Yeah, those those were the limitations we uh, we you, we chose uh, the the Gary, but. Uh, the Samuel, I think the Samuel thing was also also better. So I will try to get back to you on the actual words uh, since the. It's just uh, at the end, you you can also say the Gary tokenization can also be improved. Yeah. Yes. Improved also for the future. Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, as a team leader, I'm gonna I'm considering as a team leader. Could you just tell me about the team dynamics? How was it? uh so for the team dynamics even though we took like one of the problems we had was uh, having uh, being proactive so unless one of uh, our teammates uh, just asked something uh, the, the there was no proactivity on the team so no one just got ahead and tried to prepare anything or even uh, let someone know their uh, progress update on everything. So we had to ask every day. We had to uh, try to communicate forcibly. So it was really hard, which stalled the progress we had. So one of the only one of the teammates who were active who was helping me on the data when I had a hard time. So it was Michael. So I, I don't think the other team member also are here currently on the call, so I think they would have said something. So one of the things was on the first two days, we had a, uh, on the first day and the second day was, we tried to understand more on what we have done. So uh, we hoped that everyone would understand something and get uh, something to, for the team, for be valuable for the team. So that didn't happen. So one or two days were, were wasted. So. Those are the things. Yeah, okay, thank you for sharing that. Group work is not an easy task, but I'm glad you passed the thing. Uh, you are where you are, so it's part of the journey of uh, experiencing group work. Thank you, Group 3, for presenting. If any of the group members have anything to say, you are welcome to speak up on the project, your contribution, uh, as chance for other team members if you want. Okay, I don't think the other team members, other two member, team members are here, but I think Michael is here. If you has anything, you can see. Okay, Michael, you can speak up. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, but one of the problems were like uh, we didn't un uh, understand the concepts very well, and the second one is like we can't share like the GPU was available like uh, the. Thursday in the afternoon, I think so. Uh, Avovacar was trying to fine tune it, but uh, and the other were shutting down. But uh, but after that, it will uh, all of the systems were down. So uh, until like uh, Friday in the afternoon, we can't do much. But I was trying to fine tune the BERT model by myself, like in the Saturday, even though the results were not good. But I tried to fine tune it, but the one problem was sharing the GPUs and the resources and poor, poor communication maybe, but uh, one of the problems were yeah, sharing the hardware. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Abubakar? Uh, okay, uh, maybe after everyone has finished, maybe if anyone has a better way to fine tune, we used LoRa in Perth because we thought it was a faster one. It takes too much time. Now uh, we're actually training it just now. So it took 36 minutes mm -hmm. and only 86 of the 30,000 uh, are uh, currently on route. So if you guys have any recommendations or how much time did it take for you to fine tune a single model to get just make sense of how much data you had mm -hmm. to get a sense of how much time it would take. Okay. 
So let's just go over every one presentation. Maybe we can go back to at the end. Uh, uh, group four, could you please start with your presentation? Yeah, so good morning. Uh, I'm uh, Demis Dean is going to start the presentation and then we'll take over. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, uh, So, sorry, um, I, I didn't get you. Can you see my screen? Okay, so the objective of the project is known uh, by everybody, I think. So, this is a continual project from last week. We, we, we first of all, so this is the workflow we followed. And uh, we get the data from last week's data. So from the cargo data, from the main data from cargo. I don't think I can hear. Okay, I, I think I should take over. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen uh, before it comes in. Tamaskan, could you stop sharing? Uh, if, uh, I can just override mine. Okay, do that. So, um, uh, sorry, uh, if you if you can if you are not able to see mine, you can you can pin it. Uh, so okay, so. Uh, the, we we took uh, thank you we we took the work uh, we took this uh, we followed this process to train the and fine tune the LLM. First of all, started with retrieving the data from MongoDB. Uh, this was most of it was pre-processed, and uh, next we loaded it into Pandas data frame, then uh, created the, uh, the the data set. Using, uh, we try to use Agile first data set, and then uh, we tried also with custom data set. And then after that, we we chose the model. Uh, in this case, we experimented with uh, two or three. Uh, we started with the Gary model, and uh, tried the. Uh, we also tried. Uh, there was another model we tried, and uh, but Gary for us was was kind of the one we chose for for the rest of the time. 
And then we went on to tokenize, uh, we tokenized the data. Here we used the LAMO tokenizer. And then find, uh, selecting the configuration, we, we used LoRa for the first time. Uh, for the first time we used LoRa and then we added the configuration and applied to the model then. Uh, define the training arguments and train the model. Uh, so if I can skip over to, I'm going to skip over to uh, where we started with the project. I'm going to start with then with, with our, the scraping process. We enhanced it so that we could have, uh, 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 in addition to the select data, to select data and other data that we had, we wanted to kind of pre-process the, uh, we wanted to pre-process the script data real time as it, as we also use the other. So here we just added uh, in top, on top of the last, on last week's uh, pipeline, we added the stream processing uh, where we process just now in the, we process the, the data as it came in uh, by, by, by Faust using Faust. So, uh, the data cleaning involved uh, removing ASCII numbers and eliminates character characters and numbers. I remove punctuations and special characters and uh, standardize amharic variations uh, and combine frequent word pairs. Uh, if, if this was to ensure the amharic data was ready for for use by the LLM on chain. Uh, so is, this is just the implementation where we are uh, in Faust for, for pre-processing. Uh, here you pre-process then uh, save it to MongoDB. But for the others, we just retrieve them and uh, just use them. So this was our example of uh, the text that was pre-processed. You can see that um, the links and uh, most of the English words are removed afterwards and we had the pre-processed text there. So. Uh, when fine tuning the model now, once we had the preprocessed data uh, on our database, we, uh, we define our database uh, our parameters and retrieve the data from the database and load it to a data set, uh, Pandas data frame. Then we went on to pick only the specific, uh, only the two columns we needed, the category and the title. Uh, so in this case, we are going to in this case, we are going to, uh, our task was to like, um, to generate news headlines given the category. So uh, here we are going to uh, generate news headline uh, when you are given the category. So if you're going to ask, uh, give me local news, uh, generate for me local news headlines, uh, that was our case for, for the fine tuning. So, uh, further pre-processing was done to remove the uh, and, uh, the missing rows, the rows with the missing values, and then we are trying to create the data set. So here we <clears throat> we defined our own. We had uh, an issue, uh, most errors were occurring, and we had to change from the Hugging Face data set and to use, uh, use our own. In this case, we were able to kind of encode the labels uh, so that the labels will be like a unique number uh, and it should be easier for the model to use that. And uh, moving on, we had to identify the, we had to uh, define the tokenizer. Here we used Lama tokenizer. Uh, in this case, we used Lama tokenizer. And uh, now uh, Lama tokenizer was the base model and Gary was, uh, was the specific model we used for the tokenizer. So, um, Afterwards, we had to define the Llama model, now the, the model itself. So we used Llama for casual here. This means that it's a text generation, unlike, um, unlike, the, unlike the other task types like uh, auto sequence classification. Okay. Okay, uh, so if I can interrupt you since we're yes. getting out of time. Uh, Sorry. Um, but, but that Larry, or it's just there's a bit. Um, I'm sorry, like, um, I don't, I'm not understanding what you're saying. Uh, Ahmad, your, your voice is breaking. So Can I you? Just, 
mine is breaking. Okay, could you just, I'm just saying, could you uh, present the last part of the presentation? It's just we are yeah, running out of time. Uh, yeah. And I just want to see what is the result of the Moodle. I'll tell um, you that no. does it work, so, sorry? Yeah, we tried these steps. We tried these steps. Yeah, it was just the training and that was the end. But we tried this, this is the process we tried, but we had so many and errors and uh, we we wanted to use a different model. Uh, and when we were trying those different, we had an uh, issue with connecting to the server. Okay. Okay. Yeah, th th thank you, Hilary, for sharing. Uh, Intanan, if you have a question, I'm going to give you. Just one question about the size of the data you had used or the one that you think uh, is available. Like, uh, can, do you think there is enough data? out there that you can get and get good result with uh yeah um uh, i'm not sure if there is enough uh, I, I think there's there's substantial to kind of come up with a simple thing we try to test the with the gary we we follow the steps to load the gary and uh, we actually tested it and we saw that it had so many it was hallucinating a lot and i think there's not much data to train the models, even though it was already pre-trained by like 7 billion. Okay. How much data did you use uh, for your training? Uh, we we had like, uh, for the Slack and news, we combined them and we had like 80,000 uh, rows, uh, but we didn't manage to kind of actually train it. But we had to split it to so that we uh, use the efficient memory. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think we can uh, thank you, Hilary, for this. I think we can move on to the next group. Yeah. Just one. Uh, just say if you work up for the group dynamics, and we can move to the next. Hilary, you can say something. Uh, so the group was uh, the group dynamics. Uh, the group dynamics were good, so we, we communicated a lot. We actually had uh, sessions in the evening, uh, check-ins, and uh, some. so only like two members were, they participated, but they were having challenges on their own. So, but they managed to come in and assist if we are collaborating on writing the code. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Hilary, for the presentation, for sharing uh, good work. Uh, group four, I am sorry, group five. You can please quickly take over and start presenting. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Jarvis. Yes, I can hear. I think uh, you can see my screen. Uh, yes. So, uh, as previously mentioned, we are working on LLM to, to fine tune LLM this for this project. So, uh, as I said, this is the business objective. Let me just pass this because it's already mentioned. So, in the data collection part, we 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 tried three things. One is scraping data from different Amharic websites, news websites. So, we get data from that. The other thing we tried is we tried to uh, scrape data from books. Uh, we find some books. I think we find about seven, seven, only seven books. Uh, it was digitalized, so we were able to include it in our data set. But uh, we noticed that there are a lot of books that could be used uh, for our data, but it was not digitalized, so uh, we were not able to use them. And this is one thing that uh, I want to mention is that if we spend a little bit money on uh, digitalizing Amharic books, we could get a lot of uh, data. So one thing that we noticed is this one. The other thing, we uh, use different uh, website that has a data set, Amharic data set, like Hugging Face repository. So we get the data from that also. So in combination, uh, after merging the data, so we, are, we had about uh, 340,000 rows. It was about uh, 1.4 gigabyte. So in the data processing part, we remove unwanted characters, we normalize the Amharic letters, changing short form to normal word format, Amharic word format, which means uh, changing the English number to Giz numbers and removing the English words. 
so we process the, the data. So it's when it comes to the large language model life cycle, so we have the first uh, pre-training part, then we have, we'll have a pre-trained model, then we fine tune it and we'll have fine tuned model. So we are not actually pre-training because uh, we need a, com a high computational uh, resources and also data, but we tried it because uh, uh, at, uh, at first Gary was not working for us. So we tried to uh, uh, tokenize first our data. So we uh, the four the 1.4 GB data, which is about uh, 340,000 rows. So we try to tokenize this data uh, using sentence base, and this is the result. We uh, get about 1.7 million tokens uh, by tokenizing uh, 741,000 rows. So as you see, we try to encode this uh, this word. Uh, using our tokenization, they, this was the result of the tokens. Then we try to decode uh, the word that we tokenize, and we get uh, this one. So it, it, it's correctly the uh, tokenization, but as you can see, there is a lot of tokens, uh, which may be a problem. So we also tried BERT from Hugging Face to train BERT with Amharic, but it was uh, we were not su successful. We try. We run it about uh, 481 minutes, uh, but uh, as you see, the sp the progress was very low, so we skipped uh, using the birth and we moved on. So uh, finally, we tried uh, to install Gari model because we we read about the Gari. We know that it is better because uh, Amharic uh, tokenization is not successful on uh, another tokenization. So Gari uh, did a good tokenization. So we tried to install Gari uh, and use it, but uh, we had a lot of problem on that. We, there was a space problem. When I uh, do, when I, uh, we tried to clone the, all the repositories and change it, uh, the run uh, Python file and all, the, all those things, but we have a problem on the space issue. Uh, we had no space left, and it says uh, the AWS says uh, zero available GB. But we noticed that the problem was uh, when we tried to tokenize uh, because it uh, the the notebook was failing. We tried to use chunk uh, to break down our data, and it took a lot of space. For that, we were uh, our our Python uh, file uh, was uh, regularly failing. AWS was also failing, so we had a lot of problem on that. So we were not able to check out uh, uh, Gary. So the other uh, challenge that we have is losing our team members. We, have, we were, uh, I think, six when we start, but we are only left with three members. Uh, and the other problem is the AWS space uh, is getting low and we had constantly crashing, uh, AWS was crashing. So that was the problem. So uh, this is it, this is uh, that we have. Thank you, Travis, for the detailed and quick presentation. Uh, you said only three members uh, participate. Is that the whole week? Only three of you are working on the project? Yes. Uh, can I know your names? The one that you are. Okay. Members? Uh, Bethlehem and Tedros uh, and me. So thank you for sharing. So if you have time in the computational power and every challenge that you faced, if that was fixed, what would you have done for improving the project? So uh, when we were even trying some codes uh, for LoRa and also to do uh, instruction fine tuning. We are pre preparing even data uh, for instruction fine tuning to instruction and answers, and question and answers so that it could uh, be trained using uh, those instructions, but uh, uh, we were not able to do so. so and we will, were also exploring uh, LoRa uh, uh, for fine tuning. Okay, thank you, Javis, for the presentation. Internal, if you have one question. Oh. Sorry, just to clarify, uh, what we were trying to do with BERT, what are you trying to pre-train it? Yes, we try to pre-train it. We give it the data, uh, that's 1.4 GB data. 
and we try to train mm -hmm. it, but it took a lot of a lot of time. Uh, so we just uh, drop it finally. All right. Okay. So yeah, um, that's of course expected. Um, so uh, and you haven't managed to like um, you only tried the uh, uh, Gary and you haven't managed to actually load it to even like so you haven't like tried to fine tune any other model besides Gary. Yeah. We Hello. Yes. Uh, I t I didn't hear you. Um. Okay. Yeah. I said like, uh, have you uh, like, uh, you're you're facing this space issue, so you haven't managed or you haven't uh, managed to try fine tuning any other model, have you? Yes, because uh, we thought that we we need to uh, fine tune. A model that is already pre-trained in Amharic language, but mm -hmm. we didn't find another model that is uh, pre-trained with Amharic. We tried to pre-train uh, BERT, but uh, that was impossible, so uh, we were not able to find you. Okay, so uh, just final question: Can you report on the data you had, like how much data you had managed to collect, or like you were, you are planning to use for fine-tuning? Yes, we had about 1.4 uh, uh, gigabyte uh, data, and we tried uh, to tokenize that using the sentence piece, and we get about 1.7 million tokens. Okay, so all of this data was labeled and ready to be used for fine tuning? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay, good. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Group 5. Uh, if any member want to say something, you are welcome to do that. But if not, we can move on to Group 6. Okay, better name. Okay, thank you, everyone. So we we had a bit of uh, problems when our members were dropping out and we were collecting our data. So. We had tried to do our best, uh, but we weren't able to fine tune our model. Lastly, we had also tried to download the Llama uh, when it wasn't working for one of our members, and our AWS instance kept crashing on us as there was no space. And that's all I want to say. We had tried. Okay. Thank you, Vitalian. Thank you for the effort from Group Five, uh, Group Six. You have three minutes to present your work. Uh, all right. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm going to start the presentation for Group C. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it is. All right, so, uh, so for our group, we chose the Lama 2, so the new model the version from Hagilface, and we were going to, we were in charge of the language to fine tune the model for so we use classification. So our purpose mainly was text classification. So I'm going to skip through all the way to data collection. So we combined uh, three data sets. The first one was the data we scraped last week from Swahili News website. However, that wasn't enough since we only scraped 2,000 articles. So we, through research, we found other article, uh, other data sets with labels from Hugging Face and African National, uh, African Natural <laughs> Language process, Processing. And so our data had labels for six categories, sports, entertainment, business, economics, international news, and health. So in total, we had 54,000 rows of data. And so for the preprocessing, uh, we did the basic preprocessing steps. First, to remove punctuation and HTML tags and special characters, and we also filtered that non so um, um, 
ones. And we also removed the repetitive pressure we can to add any meaning to the PO data set. So from there, uh, Sheila, either can you continue with um, the inferencing part? I am going to stop sharing my screen because my bit is done, you know. Okay, now share your screen. I think I can use your screen. Okay, okay thank you. Um, so like after data pre-processing, or even yeah, during that part, there was the part of inferencing which was required. So the packages that we we used for inferencing were transformers and torch, and this is the installation of the packages. Next slide. Okay. Easy. Sorry. Yeah, next slide. Um. So the first step of the inferencing was sorry. Back. I just share. Okay, sorry. So the first part. Yeah. No, no, yeah, there. Yeah, the defining model part. Thank you. So the first part for um the inferencing was actually getting being able to like get into contact with the Lama model. So we had to request access. First of all, we had to do the MetLama registration and also requesting access for the specific model that we were using. So the model that we used was the Lama 27BHF. And um, defining the model required us to also like um, put the authentication token from Hacking Face, which is this one. And this is the one that would allow you to actually access, um, the, to load the Lama model. Yeah, so like if you had not requested access, your token wouldn't work. So the next part was the data loading and the inferencing. So the first example was the text generation. So for text generation, um, this is the, okay, I did the text generation inferencing and this is the output I got. Um, yes, this is the output I got for like the question, like you can see the input text was Habari yeah, and uh, the text generation that the Lama model was able to give is as follows. Next. So then there was a text summarization, which really didn't work well for the with the model. Like, yeah, the model didn't work well with the text summarization. As you can see, I asked you to summarize a particular text and the text that it gave, it gave, it didn't give a summary, it actually gave the full text and it continued um giving more text. But yeah. I, but I realize it's because like, sorry. Sorry, uh, because the like the model, the model that we are using does not have the uh, the capability for auto model summarization and I had used the auto model LSM. So then there was a the question answering part, which I actually tried because the model supports the auto model for question answering. And um, the next slide will show the results for what I got. So yeah, so like I had asked the question, I had asked, um, I had given the model um, uh, I had given the model text to tell me Mjimkua Kenya Niupi. And then the question was Mjimkua Kenya Niupi, but as you can see, it didn't give like a good answer. So it meant like we needed, and it said that we should probably train this model or fine tune it to like get better results. Next slide. Next slide, easy. Thank you. Okay, um, I don't know what happened. Daisy, Daisy, can you? Okay, I think um, I can try and share mine. I can share my screen. Sorry about that. So, where is so we were here defining text summarization, question answering. Yeah, so for the translation part, I also did the translation. Oh, sorry, let me do a slideshow. Yeah, I did the translation, the translation inferencing. And um, yeah, it really, it, tra it really tried doing the translation because like here yeah, I was trying to translate the text, hello, how are you? From English to Swahili. And um, it translated the hello part and said Habarigani. Like, this, yeah, actually, this entire statement and said Habarigani, because like Habarigani can also suffice for hello, how are you? And um, 
yeah that was the inferencing part and those were the results so the model I, through inferencing i found out that the model was good at text generation and a little bit good at text translation but it was really it was really bad at question answering and at um summarization so i'll give the next part to Dereji for the fine tuning thank you Dereji, are you there Hi, guys, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, Sheila, we can hear you. Okay, so um, Dereji is not there, so I think. Okay, so, so okay. this is the, yeah, this is the fine tuning part of the fine tuning part of the, of the project. So, um, Dereji is one who worked on most of it because like we couldn't all access the instance at the same time. So this is the installation of the loading and loading of the required models. So he used the accelerate theft as the as a, the modules you can see. Then he imported the packages and uh, yeah, this was the importing part. Can, can, you, hear can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can. Okay, so I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Nice, no, it's fine. Stop. Should I keep sharing my screen? Yes, stop your screen. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay, just share yours. Oh, can you stop your screen? Oh, okay, sorry. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm trying to go for as fast as possible. So just uh, we tried to two uh, models. The first one is belt model, and the second one is the second one is llama model. So first we import packages, uh, we install packages, and the second one is we just import our packages and. The yeah, next step is we are just trying to log in uh, to hugging face and uh, so get access from hugging face, get access uh, llama model from hugging face uh, and also from meta. And then we, we try to log in. Uh, after that, we, we are just uh, loading pre-trained model and uh, so, yeah, the next one is we just trying to uh, tokenize our data set using Llama model. So as uh, as said, so I'm trying to just map with uh, the data set with a Llama tokenizer. And uh, as well as uh, just I'm trying to, uh, we are trying to understand so the token or the input ID related to uh, our 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 text. So we we are just uh, decode our text and then uh, get what we need. After that, we are I'm trying to we are trying to just uh, uh, now the maximum token uh, we are used for this uh, project, as well as. Um, yeah, as well as uh, I am also just added uh, an instruction uh, text so the model can just easily understand and uh, let me show you our data set. So this is, uh, I think this is our data set. So I'm trying to just add some text instruction. Uh, for example, just I derived from this, from input and from label. So I first just uh, uh, put the instruction, for example, categorize the news articles into the six categories and I put uh, categories and as, as well as I just used input, which is uh, news, as well as at the end, I put uh, the result or the response. So 
then the model can easily understand. And uh, I'm also uh, just supervised, we are used supervised fine tuning parameter because our task is classification. So finally, we are just uh, pushing, merging the model with the base and push to uh, our GitHub. And so, so finally, we just test the model. Um, I'm actually just test, but uh, the testing, the test model is, but as far as I see, so it's good. So just, uh, I wrote some text uh, code and uh, try to um, test our model. So the model can just uh, generate or pre predict correctly. This is the Lama model. And, and also I used the BERT model. So the birth model is uh, it is it is good as far as I see because uh, the model is too small and also it is trained on multi language so yeah I used that one and uh, I'm trying to calculate the I'm trying to calculate the max to total tokens let me show you this one so this one is the tokens we used. So it is around 25 million totally. And, uh, and also, yeah, as I said, uh, we labeled data sets. And uh, finally, just, uh, well, finally, yeah, we just pushed our, our fine tune model and uh, yeah, test the model. So I used a uh, post demand for testing so here is what i um, think so let me just uh, x i'm actually let me take default So, so yeah, I see. So the model is just predicting correct way, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to also just I'm trying to with other sampling model, and uh, as I see, the model is good, but it's in some cases it gets wrong prediction because. Uh, you know, just the mod the pet model is uh, so the context the context window is around it is uh, five twelve yeah five twelve so so when you are trying to just uh, give a text that more than this context window so it's get uh, incorrect prediction as well as uh, uh, we didn't as well as in, in, in trained model and pre-trained while we are fine tuning model, we didn't just uh, uh, do some chunk needed. So uh, yeah, that's why the model is gets uh, incorrect prediction. And uh, yeah, so that's why, and maybe she ask. Hello. Okay. Hello. Uh, uh, good yeah. work. Yes. Okay. Group six. Uh, good work on the presentation and having a working model. Uh, let's just start with my question saying, what makes it work? I mean, other groups are having trouble with fine tuning. I know you're using Swahili, different from Amharic. It's just, I want to see your insights. Is the language that makes it easier? to do the fine tuning part or the tokenization, how easy was it when you implement this project? Okay, this uh, for our groups, uh, I think uh, 
the hardware is just uh, the AWS. So, you know, just sometimes it crashes, sometimes it uh, works smoothly. And, uh, and also, you know, we didn't uh, do any of our custom tokens. So just we used a uh, Llama tokenizer as well as Bill tokenizer. So based on that, we just uh, give our, our class, our input text. Uh, so right now your model when ask uh, what, what kind of job is, is it is is it working uh, is it performing i mean if i ask it any so highly any related question it answers or it yes. has specific thing that you have put uh only just classification task so if the if you ask it a classification task of news yeah then it can it can answer for you uh, so you you write them like group one, just classification, right? On the model? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we did classification because uh, last uh, week we just extract data from websites that related to uh, this task. So that's why we are going to going to this uh, project. Okay. At the end, which token either a more uh, model have you used uh, i used both but the build uh, model is good as far as uh, which one yes model. Uh, again could you repeat it sorry i used built model built Perfect. model uh, how easy or difficult is uh, using so highly language for modeling? Is there a lot of resource on it or? Mm, yeah, because so it's it's depend on model, right? So for Llama 2, it, it needs a lot of data because uh, the model is too large. And uh, so for BERT model is, uh, I see it is enough for for uh, for our data sets, so our data sets have uh, it's around 54k. So yeah, it is enough for for BERT model, but for Llama, not. Uh, just last question from me: uh, How was the group dynamic strategy in your team? So I think the group dynamics is good, as uh, but uh, sometimes you know just. It's time difference uh, for for Joseph, but it missed uh, our meeting because uh, uh, because of the time difference, and it's generally it's our group dynamics is good. Okay, uh, in Tulan, if you have questions, Sheila. Oh, sorry, you asked like you asked a question about like the Swahili, the Lama and the Swahili and how compatible it is. If there's one oh, thing yes. I realized about, one thing I realized about the inferencing is that the Lama recognizes a little bit of Swahili. It has, I think it recognizes because like when you asked it, when you were asking it, when I was asking it a couple of questions during inferencing, you could tell it was giving you like some it has some Swahili context, like some of it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sheila. Uh, so, Imtina? Uh, yeah, so very good work from Group 6. I actually don't have any questions. Great. All my questions were answered. Thank you. Yeah, OK, we can stop the presentation, Group 6. Thank you for presenting, and good job. Okay. Uh, are there any members from Group 7? you can stop sharing the screen i don't think there are members here from group seven right yeah i don't think so also just uh, a little comment uh, because abu Bakr uh, was asking questions on the chat and these are very important questions actually um yeah let's uh, because we will not have enough time to discuss this now maybe can you can you write everything on slack abu Bakr? um okay okay uh, yeah that would be great um and yeah so just um generally uh just to say that this question five 
how about is it uh, the big question of is worth modeling or uh, I'm having training this is um, really the question like uh, we were supposed to like by the end of this project maybe because you face a lot of you face problems or most of you face problems doing actual fine tuning that meant like you haven't really reached the the goal but to have uh, like an understanding of like is fine tuning enough maybe fine tuning is not enough yes you need pre-training actually so this is like um i don't think we can in this question you should have been able to answer yourself really but like well, let's have a discussion on this uh on slack uh because now we are running out of time uh sorry for um ahmed can take over okay uh so we can end the presentation thank you everyone for joining in and present your work uh let's join the by 10 okay Thank you.